My name is Peter Valco, and I have autism. The way I've come to view autism is that you can either view it as a detriment or utilize it as a tool. I utilize it in my content creation as the bucket man, and I utilize it as a cannabis advisor at Air Wellness, Woodbridge, New Jersey. I find my unique blend of autism is welcoming to people and allows them to feel comfortable with me. Thus, I can sort out their cannabis needs much easier. Air Wellness is a place of employment that has welcomed me with open arms, autism and all, and I couldn't be more grateful for that. Chase out the raccoon. Why? Do you think Terry will get them all out? No, I do not. Terry started having sex with the animals right off the bat. I could have sworn you looked professional. In what regard? The first thing you did was grab the fire extinguisher and start spraying it everywhere. And once the deer started freaking out because the raccoon was freaking out, you ran outside, offered $20 to the first person who could, quote, dominate two animals in a way I'd never seen before, end quote. So how long till they're out cold? Well, I triggered the sleeper agent under my desk right as we ran out. That was a half hour ago. That being said, there was a gleam in Terry's eyes that suggested he would need a little while to be knocked out. What do we do with them after? Put the animals on the lawn and weekend Bernie's Terry into a lift. You think the driver will be okay? Eh, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's one of the risks you take when you're a lift driver anyway. I don't think they knowingly take on the risk of being sexually assaulted by a vagrant who has sex with animals. My God, we need legislation. Taylor Swift once said, it's so simply stated, yet so profound to me. People are going to judge you anyway, so you might as well watch the Bucket Man Show. Just hit a button, Morty, give me a beat. Oh man, okay, alright, um... Yeah, I couldn't get them to leave. Ooh, me, look at that furry little hole there. Shut the fuck up, Terry! Get to the deck concept! American Breach! So let's give you some context first. Underworld Breach is a two-mana red enchantment that gives all non-land cards in your graveyard escape. The escape cost being the card's mana value plus exiling three cards from your graveyard. And in case it hasn't been self-explained, escape is an ability that allows you to cast a spell from your graveyard. Well, in this deck, we're either going to use it for repeat value paired with all the surveil value we're going to get, or we can use it to churn through every card in our deck so we can drop a Thassa's Oracle and win the game with an empty deck. We use things like Mistress Bobble, Consider, and the Surveil mechanic to turn through our deck. We have some counter spells and burn spells for interaction. And hopefully we can power through to hit one of these win cons and take home a victory. So without any further ado, let's breach. This is acceptable. We've got some lands and surveil cards and the Thassa's Oracle to win the game. Our opponent drops a Stitcher Supplier. Let's start building that surveil value by casting a Thoughtbound Phantasm. Our opponent casts a Grizzly Salvage. Then proceeds to pass their turn. Alright, let's see. So let's keep the surveil value going and cast another Thoughtbound Phantasm. And with this landfall trigger of a Bloodgast, I am very certain that we are playing against the Dredge deck. Next, our opponent hard cast a prized amalgam. We will cast a consider in response. <laughs> and undead. We are going to elect not to block here. By blocking, we would be milling three more cards into their graveyard and fueling them further. Oh boy, more undead bondage. I am rather impressed with the wall we're holding against Dredge right now, though. Which altogether is good news, because I don't always do well under pressure. Did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Booty is more important than food. Booty is more important than water. And when I see a man's I likes, I tells him. I likes him, and I wants him. And we can either do this the easy way, or the hard way. The choice is yours. Did you order the code red? Uh, I see now you've chosen the hard way. Not gay, it's about power. Just like this. That's right, I showed you what's what. Alright, let me just consider... Big swole surveil value. Alright, we'll hold this brainstorm tight and pass the turn. Our opponent casts a blood gas, and then flashes back an otherworldly gaze from their graveyard. Which, to be frank, if it makes our opponent happy, we will counter it. Our turn! Keep the removal. Big swole surveil value. Next, we'll cast Brainstorm to fetch the Lightning Bolt and see if we're any closer to comboing off. 
Well, we got some removal. Let's use it effectively. And you know what? I think we're better off holding off as a wall right now. Our opponent casts a silver smoke ghoul. All right, at this point, I think we're going to use the Underworld Breach more as a value engine. So let's get it out there. All right, what do we have to work with here? All right, first we'll cast the Thoughtbound Phantasm. Then we'll cast a Consider and gain some Surveil value. Our time will come one way or another. Our opponent hard cast surprised the Malgum. And that's it. So we'll just take this opportunity to put Loris into our hand. And we'll push the line of aggression by attacking with 166. All right, opponent, what do you got? Our opponent casts a Seder Wayfinder to fill their graveyard. Then hard cast a Creeping Chill, which we will counter. <laughs> Fuck you. Moving to our turn, we will cast Loris, which will allow us to cast Dragon's Rage Channeler from our graveyard. And then we will once again get in for six. Ah! Man, the times I've been snuck up like that in my life. Hey, you, up there, you. Yes, you. Hey, hey, down here. Hey, hey, look down here. Hey. How are you today, you fine American? Oh my god, is that Tim Scott? You bet you're beating American hard it is. Why are you tiny and in my apartment? <laughs> tiny, in your apartment. That's all the things that Democrats want you to believe. Nope, I'm basing this solely on the fact that you are tiny and you are in my apartment. You're say if you ask me. But I'll tell you what is tiny and in your apartment. Immigrants. Illegal immigrants. Nope. Believe me, brother. Not your brother. This country needs a lot of work. Join our ranks and we can restore things to the way they were. The way they were meant to be. And we can seal the deal with a kiss. The fuck? What? It's a kiss. No, I don't recall ever saying anything about kiss. You, Which you did. But I'm not going to say no to my constituents' wants. Come here, you big guy. Back the hell off. Ah, uh, here we are. A good old example of plain old-fashioned American racism. Black man tries to come up and give you a kiss and you bash him away. No, no, not true. I would say no to any man trying to come up and kiss me, especially randomly, especially if they were Tim Scott, and especially if they were tiny, and you still have not answered, why are you tiny? I walked in on Marjorie Taylor Greene devouring a goat and she used her witch magic on me. Seems our opponent's running out of options. Teams our opponent gains some blood gas and then casts a Skyclave Shade and tops it all off with another worldly gaze. And here come the bondage zombies. Alright, it's our turn to get into a pretty pivotal point of this game. I think we need to do another utility underworld breach. Alright, let's see how this goes. Alright, honestly not the progress we wanted to make, but we've got a full hand now. And our opponent casts another Seder Wayfinder, which we will immediately counter. They then uses their Infer Deadlands to murder our Luris. And, and I've... okay, they seem to have gone with the full swing here. And I know I'm autistic and all, but I think they may have fucked up on their map. do the sideboard. We will side in the extra stores to plowshares because they can't dredge back from exile. Unholy heave for spot removal. Side out a spell pierce. Side out a consider. A brainstorm. And ru ru run it back. No. Unacceptable. Uh, more than one land is always welcome. We will keep this. Alright, our opponent hard cast a prized amalgam, which we will immediately source to plowshare. Our turn. Done. Our opponent's first move of game number two is to cast an otherworldly gaze to fill their graveyard. God damn it, this game number two has been boring so far. Don't tell me you're going to just pass your turn. God damn it, we'll consider. We'll consider again. Oh, haha! -ha, I get it, God. You're an asshole. Keep the spot removal. God, I hate these fucking games of chicken. We'll pass our turn. And another path. All right, let's throw down a thread and see if we can kick up the heat here. Son of a cock-loving bitch. Later, Wayfinder, fill your graveyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking creeping chill. Oh, you've cast another worldly gaze with not enough mana for a spell pierce. What a shame. <laughs> Land drop. Here come the blood gas. Well, you know what they say. When one door closes, another one opens. And the best relevance I can decipher from that is that if you get a creature, one has to die. <laughs> Actually, change of philosophy, they both have to die. Alright, let's go on a cruise and refill our hand. Then we shall brainstorm. Ah, oh. 
Our opponent cast otherworldly gaze to hopefully find their way out of this tough spot they're in here. Take that two otherworldly gazes, which I consider being greedy, so we're going to counter it. No, 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 you sneaky fox. Eat me. All right, with the lack of fight back we're getting from our opponent here, I think we can safely go for the Thassa's Oracle plan. So let's go a cruising real quick and refill our hand again. And if that is our game plan, I think Enhanced Surveillance is a great card to have on the battlefield. And then we'll pass our turn. I fear thee not, Creeping Chill. And if that's all you got for your turn, we will brainstorm. And we'll do it again. Okay, here's our plan. We're gonna cast a Dragon's Rage Channeler, and then we're gonna pass our turn. Trust me, I'll know when it's time to start breach. Hey, hey, what are you doing? That thing? You trying to do a thing? Stop it. Don't do that thing. You goddamn shit rabbit. Well, silver lining, we get the super surveil. Hey, if he's not posing a threat, then I'm fine taking my time. Let's do it. Cruise number three. And we'll pass our turn. We're getting close. We're getting close to breaching time. Our opponent casts the Silver Smoke Ghoul and passes their turn. All right, I say we got one more turn before we can really start going off. So let's set up here. Let's cast a Dragon's Rage Channeler and then another Dragon's Rage Channeler. And then Swords to Plowshare their Silver Smoke Ghoul. Fine, don't take the life gain, you cock. We get the Super Surveil. Two Super Surveil. We are on the edge of glory, ladies and gentlemen. Let's pass our turn. Next turn's a turn, I'm telling you. Motherfucking creeping chill. <laughs> and the Silver Smoke Ghoul returns because he gained three life. All right, guys, the time has finally come. Let's do a breach. And just in case this doesn't play out, whatever, as long as it's dead. And now we breach. All right, these combos are always a bitch, so let's get to the speed up. Okay, that took nowhere near as long as I thought it was going to take. The Thassa's Oracle is resting safely on top of our library. We will swing for six just for good measure and watch our opponent kick and flail against this imminent victory coming our way. All right, we've drawn the last card from our library. It's time to claim our victory. Thank you all for tolerating and watching my video. Please do not forget to like, comment, follow, and subscribe if you have not already. I've said this once, I'll say it every video. Your support means more to me than you can ever know, so I thank you immensely. That's all for now. See you guys next time.